So this is the um, next installment of a particular series that uh, I told a good friend I would I would talk about. The um, District of Columbia et al. Petitioners versus Dick Anthony Heller. It's a Supreme Court case that took place on June 26, 2008. For... Um, for about 69 years, the United States versus Miller served as the, the standpoint of whenever the Supreme Court saw a uh, question of, of Second Amendment type concern, they just wouldn't hear it because of the case precedence of U.S. versus Miller. Till all of a sudden, a police officer in the District of Columbia applied for a permit in order to have a handgun in his house and was denied and it eventually made it all the way up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court heard the case it was um, it was really amazing to me it, it makes me wonder what if people had directly challenged the uh, National Firearms Act of 34, or wait, you know what I mean. If somebody did have a machine gun that was, say, unlicensed, and they said, well, it's on constitutional grounds, cite U.S. versus Miller and say, this is a, this is a current military weapon and based on case precedents and the understanding on the spirit of the Second Amendment. Therefore, the National Firearms Act of 1934 is unconstitutional in that it inhibits the ability of the citizenry militia to arm itself. Now, they didn't win that one, but in the case of uh, D.C. versus Heller, you could chalk it up as a win. Let me, uh, here's what I wanted to read to you. The Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, construing his complaint as seeking the right to render a firearm operable and carry it about his home in that condition only when necessary for self-defense, reversed. It held the Second Amendment protects an individual right to possess firearms and that the city's total ban on handguns as well as its requirement that firearms in the home be kept non-functional even when necessary for self-defense violated that right. The court appeals directed to the district court to enter summary judgment for respondent. Um, within this uh, Within this uh, discourse from Justice Scalia, they um, they talk about the actual terminology of the the keep and bear arms. You know, like uh, when we read the right to keep a bear arm shall not be infringed, and somebody like says, "Well, this is what that means." They get into the the grammar of it and the current understanding, and it's a very very good read, but it, it has stuff in it like uh, relationship between preparatory clause and operative clause, and it, it's grammatical stuff, and it's, it's damn near enough to make you cross-eyed. Um, what's cool, though, has to do with, uh, and let me see if I can find it again. Um, okay, here's what I wanted to share with you. Two, two more things on this. We know of no other enumerated constitutional right whose core protection has been subjected to a freestanding interest-balanced approach. The very enumeration of the right takes out of the hands of government, even the third branch of government, the power to decide on a case-by-case -case basis whether the right is really worth insisting upon. A constitutional guarantee subject to future judges' assessments of its usefulness is no constitutional guarantee at all. 
constitutional rights are enshrined with the scope they were understood to have when the people adopted them. Whether or not future legislatures, or yes, even future judges, think that scope too broad, we would not apply an interest balancing approach to the prohibition of peaceful neo Nazi march through the Skokie. The First Amendment contains the freedom of speech guarantee that the people ratified, which included exceptions for obscenity, libel, and disclosure of state secrets, but not for the expression of extremely unpopular and wrongheaded views. The Second Amendment is no different. Like the first, it is the very product of an interest balancing by the people, which Justice Breyer would now conduct for them anew. And whatever else it leaves to future evaluation, it surely elevates above all other interests the right of law-abiding, responsible citizen to use arms in defense of hearth and home. Um, in sum... We hold that the district's ban on handgun possession in the home violates the Second Amendment, as does its prohibition against rendering any lawful firearm in the home operable for the purpose of immediate self-defense. Assuming that Heller is not disqualified from the exercise of Second Amendment rights, the district must permit him to register his handgun and must issue him a license to carry it in the home. Within this discourse is also um, the explanation of how... Um, how a handgun is actually the the premium tool for for home defense, and it it links it up with uh, the definition of what what really constitutes a militia once again, and it uses um, it uses an example and almost a almost a pro pro citizenry militia, which I I like because I agree with it, so it feels good to read something you agree with, um, but it. If you have the time, and if I was able to work it out, and if there's if there's really really good interest when I uh, when I come back from the break, I can do a little bit of an exposition on this, because there's a there's a point where the uh, the Supreme Court justice here qualifies the citizenry militia, and it it uses the terminology, and within the terminology. Uh, the judge is able to to define okay a militia is actually freestanding and it is up to the congress to call forth and provide for the officership but a freestanding militia it describes it has to do with actual armed people but just so um, just so we don't go too far in one particular direction We'll finish this off with the, uh, the last paragraph. We are aware of the problem of handgun violence in this country, and we take seriously the concerns raised by many Amici who believe that prohibition of handgun ownership is a solution. The Constitution leaves the District of Columbia a variety of tools for combating that problem, including some measures regulating handguns, but the enshrinement of constitutional rights necessarily take certain policy choices off the table. These include the absolute prohibition of handguns held and used for self-defense in the home. Undoubtedly, some think that the Second Amendment is outmoded in a society where our standing army is the pride of our nation, where well-trained police forces provide personal security and where gun violence is a serious problem. That is perhaps debatable. What is not debatable? is that it is not the role of this court to pronounce the Second Amendment extinct. I hope, um, I hope everybody sees this particular case as encouraging as I did. And um, as, I, as I read that discourse, I was, um, I was quite inspired to, to see what I saw as, uh, as enlightenment on the case of the judge. Instead of, uh, well, so-and-so said this 60 years ago, so to <sighs> so go poop in a boot. You know, it's, it's good to see, uh, see the dudes doing their dudes and dudettes doing their jobs. All right, we'll have uh, one more in this series, which I believe is the icing on the cake, and then we'll go from there. Y'all take care.